Hi guys, Jay Smith here, welcome to the Ask Golf Nut channel and welcome to the Mizuno Pro 245 against the JPX923 Forge. Now, I have done videos of the 245 when it comes to full review. Again, you can pop up there and have a look, uh, always on my uh, channel listing anyway. And I've done the old comparison between the 225 and the uh, 923 Forge, but now the 245 is out and it has got a massive upgrade in tungsten, which does now push it past where the old 245 was, and it is a very good update for Mizuno. Both lofted at 30 degrees. There are some slight differences when it comes to the tech, obviously tungsten within the 245 and micro slot, which is very Pro 243-esque. Again, this has had a micro slot for a little while now. The 223 had micro slot, 923's got micro slot, and of course the 243 has got a very similar micro slot to this one, because this one came out after the 223. Both made of very, very similar things. They are chromoly, when it comes to 245 and also the 7-iron of the uh, 923 Forge. They both move into Grain Flow Forge when it goes to the more higher lofted irons. So let's go 245 first. Let's go hit that and let's go see how they compare. We'll do all the forgiveness as well. I'll hit it all over the face to see how both of them work comparison to each other to see if one's more forgiving than the other. That will be after this. So let's go get the simulator going and let's go see how the 245 feels compared to the forged. Day set now change. We are going to hit the 245 first. We are at Glenfora Golf Course, hole 10. It's a par four normally of whatever, but I have moved the tee down the fairway to 180 yards. Now I will be doing this test at my give or take normal speed. Again, I've done full reviews of both of these where I do at different speeds, etc. But if there is a difference between these two when it comes to launch and spin or anything else like that, that will be translated through for different speeds anyway. So the main thing is to see what if there's a difference between looks, feel and performance, and also the forgiveness side as well, which will come after this. The only real difference I would say, which is a marked difference, is the top line thickness. The 245 has a thinner top line than that of the JPX 93 Forge. Uh, blade lengths, again, there's about a millimeter difference between these two, sole thickness, not that much different. All the other measurements really are within a very small amount. Okay, on whole, the 245 is a smaller, more players looking golf club. Now I've been working on trying to get a little bit more drawy because um, over the last sort of few weeks, months, I've been getting a little bit cutty with my delivery. Not much, but it's something that I want to try and control. So um, apologies for some iffy strikes as I'm trying to now move path a little bit more out to the right. Right, down by the golf ball. The 245 does look a nice golf club. That's left a bit. Slightly high toe, very fractionally. Wow, that's carrying. Club pass from the inside, did see that. Yay, we're winning. 0.9 from the inside, face closed by 1.2. Slightly baby high toe, we'll get rid of, get away with that one, no problem. Um, 35 yards in the air and 47 degrees descent angle, 182. Yes, they are punchy, these things. Obviously 30 degrees, um, that's about my six iron. And my six iron goes around 178. Now that's longer. I mean, okay, we're not talking massively. We're not talking huge amounts. We are talking a certain amount. And that wasn't the most ideal strike of the world. Feeling wise, you can definitely tell that it's um, their most game improvement pro iron. Again, it's hollow body that has got tungsten, that has got that copper underlay to try and make it sound a certain way. Again, Mizuno decide they want their golf clubs to try and sound a certain way. Same again, really, when it comes to strike, slightly toe, maybe a fraction high, a copy of the last one. Oh, going to, don't do too far. Same exact carbon copy of the last one. Um, a 182 again. 35 yards in the air, 47 degrees descent angle. It is doing well, 182 again. That's a, um, yeah, it's a mighty long way. Obviously this is seven iron. So my six iron is half an inch longer. So you'll gain a little bit of clubhead speed from being slightly longer, but same loft. Yet this is definitely going up as much. It's definitely going as far, if not further, and it's slightly shorter. So you can definitely tell it's the face and also a little bit of the tungsten giving it a good old help up in the air but it's definitely a solid, punchy feel. Not from hitting it there on the face. That's fairly low on the face. As you can see, oh my word. <laughs> Just slightly low, that's all. Oh, that's interesting. Quad didn't get all the dots. 
Uh, club path was one degree from the inside, but that was slight, that was middle, but slightly low on the face. But yeah, it's working really well. That's low on the face and that's launching about a degree or so less than what the other ones were. But let's go give it one more final try before we flick over to the 923 forged. Carbon copy, this time, Ooh, am I gonna run out of green? Oh, I don't think I am. It's gonna be close though. Low again on the face, not as bad, slightly healy as well. Yeah, six mil hill, seven mil low. And face and path are very good. I mean, that's not bad. Five yards offline at 187 yards. You wouldn't complain whatsoever. And 184, 34 yards in the air, 46 degrees descent angle. It's just very, very punchy and very, very good. That is consistently going further than my um, six iron and it's half inch shorter. And again, those strikes aren't ideal. So this has got tech and it does give a much springier face. Now we're gonna go to the 923 Forge now. The 923 Forge is more down the JPX route. So it is designed to be hit a little bit more interesting around the face. It will have potentially a little bit more of a punchier face because that micro slot, etc. But let's go flick over now. Let's go see how the 923 Forge compares. Back now, change data sets. I've got the 923 Forge in my hands. And yes, you can obviously see when it comes to the looks of this thing, it is much more down the JPX look. It's just so on this one, you can see compared to the uh, 245, the dimensions of it are just slightly bigger. Everything's just slightly bigger. Sole thickness is just slightly bigger. Blade lengths are just slightly bigger. Top lines are slight, I mean, it's are not a lot. I mean, when it, I'll put the graph up on the screen there so you can see the differences between these in the literally in the millimeters, because it's not much really, let's face it. But this has got microslops, so it will be interesting to see with a potentially springier face if that equates to any more distance or at least any more help when you hit it around the face and we'll do forgiveness testing in a little while. Down by the golf ball, it looks like it's got a fraction more offset than the 245. That's a good one to start off with, 1.38 efficiency. Yeah, wow, look at that. Again, we are talking about serious distance on that one. 183 carry, good strike. We'll take that one every day. And it is slightly drawy, which is good. That's what I'm trying to get to at the moment. I'm trying to get my path a little bit more from the inside. It's making my strike, shall we go, a little bit wonky from time to time, but it's still doing all right. Feel-wise, it's really tight between these two. I can't really tell that much of a difference between them. Now, obviously the 245 is hollow-bodied. Hollow-bodied irons can resonate quite loudly and so I'm happy that that's got copper underlay. I think with the hollow bodied and the copper underlay it's kind of neutralizing to the more of a solid feeling as such of the 923 forged. Again this has got micro slots so it'll be interesting to see what differences are in forgiveness. That is so far right you would not believe. <laughs> Go on bounce that way. No that's 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 terrible. That's with me trying to change my path, etc. Not reacting to it, there you go. Path is good, my face was a while open. We will call that, oh, it worked quite well. I mean, it's going 38 yards in the end, 49 degrees in the angle, but I'm not surprised. But I hit it so far right, that's hilarious. My face did not recover. That's the problem with me trying to push my path. Synchronization goes out a little bit, but again, just trying to move my baseline more zero and less across. Feel-wise, again, just as no different to the 245. That's what we call overcorrection. <laughs> Path of zero in face, though. look at that. I would like to say this is nothing to do with the golf club and it's all me. Path is zero, face, there we go. We got it closing. Um, strike was good, three mil heel. But as you can see, that's going left. So that's me, 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 and not the club, club club that's what i'm trying to do when it comes to trying to change my path a little bit the feeling wise again that's freeman hill that's within reason buttoned and it does just feel really quite nice again 1.38 efficiency like, this does feel at the moment without getting data i mean we're hitting a few shots we need, i need to hit a lot lot more shots turn the camera off get it onto the range and bash these two like 100 times each to get like a properly good average data set of what happens when you hit it around the face etc but feel wise it feels exactly the same really as 245. I can't really tell that much difference. But again, performance wise, the only thing I could probably say at the moment is this may come off the face just a fraction faster. And welcome to the poor strike brigade. Welcome to the low heel brigade. <laughs> I will hit another one. 
because that's not the greatest in the world. Poor strike, it was doing fairly well though. I mean, again, 34 yards in the air and 47 degrees ascent angle from a clearly bad strike, 12 mil heel, seven mil low. That's not good. Right, let's just go one last one. Let's see if we can get a decent strike on this. That's better. Slightly healy, but better. That is launching. Look at that. Path 1.5 from the inside, just saw on quad there, yay. 1.5 from the inside, face is zero effectively. Little baby Healy, seven mil heel, but 35 yards in the air, 47 degrees percent angle, 1.37 efficiency. Offline is zero, zero, which is working. It's just I've got to work on the pattern a bit more to get a little bit more consistent. And then 183 carry, it is working extremely well. So on oh, first thoughts, possibly, this is a little bit faster off the face, possibly. Now, again, it's a feeling. I've hit a few shots with each, it's not enough. I need to whack them a load of times now to get to the actual averages to see how these two really work. But I think the 245, if I was to have to say at the moment, 245 to me looks nicer, feels both exactly the same. There's no real difference there. And if anything, this launch is a fraction higher maybe, but then doesn't have quite so fast a face. But that's what I can see for the moment. Let's get the camera off. Let's go back onto the range. Let's go whack these a load of times. I'm talking a serious amounts of times, but all over the face as well. High toe, heel low, all those weird and wonderful to see. Out of these two, which one is more forgiving? Let's go see how the JPX 923 Forge got on when I hit it a load of times. I'm talking a hundred times against the 245 when I also hit that one a boatload of times, approximately a hundred times as well. I am tired, but to see if there's a distinct difference in performance between these two, not just hitting four or five shots each on the uh, simulator. Can't really see anything if you're just gonna hit three or four or five shots. You need to hit a massive data set. And I've also captured some interesting strike data to see if there's a forgiveness difference between these two. You can see the ball speed difference on the 923, you've got 120 miles an hour against 119.4 miles an hour. So 0.6 of miles an hour, not much difference whatsoever. Launch angle though, you can see the 245 is launching slightly higher, one degree higher than the JPX 923. We'll go look at, we'll go look at the clubhead data in a sec to see if there's any dynamic loft difference or if there's any way that I'm delivering the um, 245 to try and elevate the golf ball slightly higher and see if I'm cheating effectively. We'll go have a look at that in a second. Remember, we have got a boatload of tungsten low in the face on that in the 245. Um, spin though, there's a slight spin difference, a 290 or so difference of RPM. It's so small, but it is there, 5.1 to 4.8. It's small, but it's there. And then peak height, you can see with the slightly higher um, launch angle of the 245, it's peaking height at 35 against 33. And I think there's actually about 1.6 or so uh, yards actual, but obviously through rounding 33, 35, but you'll be able to see it when you do the ball compares. It's visible anyway. And carry 174, no difference in carry at all, 174 a piece. They just get there slightly different ways and descent angle within 0.4 of a degree, exactly the same. Let's go have a look at that clubhead data to see actually what differences are and if I'm artificially generating that extra launch. 87.8 to 87.9, 0 0.1 of a mile an hour, no differences there. Efficiency, 1.37 to 1.36. Now, it was something that I was feeling when I was um, hitting the shots on camera, is that I just felt that the, um, the 923 Forge, it came off the face for just a fraction of, okay, it's 0 0.01 of an efficiency, which is not a lot, but it's distinctly there. You can feel that it just wants to hop off the face a fraction faster. Attack angles within 0.7, club paths within 0.4, face to path is within 0.4 as well, so my delivery is very, very, very close. Lies within 0.3, and dynamic loft, the most important, the dynamic loft, 25.2, 25.2, bang on to the 0.1 of a degree difference between these two. There's no difference in loft, so the actual launch is coming from that tungsten in the 245. The 245 with that boatload upgraded tungsten, it's getting that golf ball launching. It launches a degree more than the 923, which is actually quite impressive. Face contact, there's one millimeter difference in the difference between them. One millimeter heel, zero mil low, two mil heel, one mil low, so one mil a piece. And I've got stand deviation on everything that you can see there and you can critique if you want to. Again, we are talking about very small amounts. Ball and club compare screen, so you can see the differences between the two club and all that lot. You can see all the lines are very, very, very similar. Strike is very, very similar too. And you can see the big difference you can see there is the flight differences. On left-hand side, you can see the 245, the red line over the pink line, purple line, magenta line, fuchsia, whatever that color that is. Um, you can just see it launches fractionally higher and it just stays all the way through. Again, 
they come in, I mean, 245 comes in a fraction of Siva, but it's not a lot, and they both go the same distance anyway. And if, you ha if I had to say something on the dispersion side against dispersions me, but the pattern I would say that if, you, if I had to have one golf club to hit target and it was gonna be one or the other, I would choose 245. I, I don't know whether it's because it suits my, because it just doesn't feel like it flies off the face as fast, I don't know. I just feel that I can control the distance a little bit better on that 245 than I can do the 9234. It is a feeling. Again, we've got stand deviation on there of the difference between five and three. So you'd argue that yes, I'm controlling carry distance a bit better. I mean, yeah. It's so marginal, it can go either way. Right, let's go see the forgiveness difference between these two. When you head out the middle, let's go like for like strikes, whack them out the middle and let's see what happens when you get drop off. I've got one here, 9234 first, uh, two mil high, one mil low uh, toe. So it's within three millimeters perfect 1.39 efficiency 1.39 that is a mighty fast middle of the golf club if you go then go to a pro 245 this is four mil low so it's a fraction of the ball speed that's potentially taken away from a four mil low it's tiny but 1.37 i reckon you can get 1.3 out of this possibly with an absolute yeah but we are still talking that the 923 Forged just wins fractionally over the springiness, the ball speed potential off the middle of the golf club. Let's go test forgiveness now. We've got 11 mil heel, 4 mil high on the JPX 923 Forged, 1.33 against 15 millimeters, 1 mil high. So a worse strike. We are talking 4 millimeters or so worse strike. It's healy, so it's not good. 1.34. So we have a 0.01 increase. Um, than that of the um, 923 Forge, but it has, is a worse strike. So if you're gonna get the same efficiency from a worse strike, again, you're gonna get more efficiency from the exact same strike. So you can hit a 245 worse and still get the same result uh, efficiency-wise than a better hit 923. And that's gotta be the tungsten, has to be the tungsten. With that tungsten in there, the upgrade of the 245, it has helped now, transformed well, I'd say transform is a bit of an aggressive word, but it has made a big difference over the 225 having the upgrade in tungsten. The 923 forged on 11 mil low, 4 mil toe, and it's 1.31, which is not bad whatsoever. And then you've got 11 mil toe, 4, 11 mil low, 4 mil toe, exactly the same strike on the 245. This is but with an open face slightly. So as soon as you open the face, you do get a little bit more deflection. So it's marginal. I mean, loft is within 0.3 of a degree. It's still 0.3 of a degree more on the 245, but the face is slightly open. So we are gonna get a slight reduce, uh, reduction in, uh, in uh, efficiency, increase in deflection. So even though they're the same, you'd argue that if you were to marry the two, it'd be 1.32 and a slight win would go 245. But that is so small. It's not like the heel where you're hitting it worse and still getting the same. This is very, very small. I would say you could move either way between the 923 Forge and 245. But if I had to pick a winner, I would say 245, but it is the most marginal uh, win ever. Go toe, 19 mil toe, one mil low and 923 Forged. And we are at 1.32 efficiency on a 23 degree lofted head. I've de-lofted this one slightly. So 23, we have to be open and honest with every single thing that we do. That's why I give club head data. So we've got 19 millimeters toe, one mil low, 1.32 against 18 millimeters toe, one mil high. So within one millimeter, exactly the same. What I have got though is two degrees more loft on the 245 and we hit the same efficiency number. They're exactly the same efficiency as 1.32 basically within reason exactly the same strikes the big difference there is i've delivered two degrees less loft with the 923 forge and as soon as you take loft off you decrease deflection and basically hit it more like that like a proper thud rather than a glance that's the difference when you have loft it's a three-dimensional thing and so even though there's the same efficiency as 1.32 the win would go to 245 on the basis the fact that it's been delivered with half a golf clubs more loft than that of the 923 so the wins, I would say, when it comes to forgiveness are marginal, although they are distinct when it comes to the heel and toe. I would say 245, absolutely more forgiving than 923 Forge off heel and toe. Is it by a massive amount? No, but it's measurable, and you can see the difference off the bottom of the golf club within reason. They are very, very similar. The big difference in performance you can see between these is more so the launch characteristics. The 245 wants to launch the golf ball slightly higher than that of the 923 Forge, and there is a slight penalty of spin is 290 or so rpm 
It's not like it's 1,000 or 1,500 RPM, it's 290. It's such a small amount. It, the 245 with that tungsten just launches really, really well. They both go the same distance anyway, it's just they get there slightly different ways. Now, when it comes to looks and feel, guys, that is subjective. And what I like is completely different to what you guys down the camera are gonna like. Personally, I prefer the looks of the 245 because it looks more like a blade. I'm a blade player, so I don't like busy. And so the JPEX 93.4 just looks a fraction more busy. But again, if you want a golf club which has a little bit more visual tech, then there you go, you've got the 923 Forge. It's not a bad looking golf club, it's just that the 923 Forge looks like the 923 range. Well, they all, even the Tor, has similarities from the hot metal of the, of the aesthetics. But when it comes to the Mizuno Pro, the Mizuno Pro 245 looks like a fat 241. And so, yes, it will always um, have my favoritism from that side of things because I'm a blade player. When it comes to feel, they both basically feel exactly the same. There's no difference whatsoever. One's got copper un, uh, copper underlay in the 245, but it is hollow bodied against the no copper underlay, but it's got a um, more standard construction, but it's got the micro slot. So effectively, they both feel identical. Some people care about feel, some people don't. Depending on which you are, you either care about it or just ignore what I'm saying. Hope you liked the video. If you did, thumbs up, go on YouTube like so do I. Down there is a subscribe button. It's great for the channel. If you could subscribe, it's free, so thank you. And next to that is a bell icon. That's a notification bell. If you click that one, that'll let you know next time. I upload another video, so I hope you will. And we'll see you again soon.